Good morning. Thank you. I'm going to offer this prayer in the tradition of historic Christianity, but that's not meant to be exclusive. Please, anyone, regardless of faith or lack of faith, feel free to join us in body, mind, and spirit. Let's pray. Creator, though separated physically, we ask that today you bind us together through your Holy Spirit in the midst of a slow-moving crisis that quietly stalks us through fear. We gather to remember a sudden crisis that shocked us with terror nearly 20 years ago. We hold before you today the men and women who ran toward that terror, just as they continue to do today in the midst of these new threats. We hold before you those who were lost 19 years ago. We give thanks for their courage and sacrifice. We hold before you their families and loved ones who have learned to live without them. We hold before you those who still carry the scars, physical, mental, and spiritual. Lord, be their comfort. We hold before you our own first responders, some of whom were serving us 19 years ago, and some who were only children, but all of them faithfully standing between us and danger every day. Lord, bless them and keep them safe. Lord, in this, a season of fear, division, and doubt, we come together under your covering, claiming hope, unity, and faith. For through every crisis, you have been and continue to be with us. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for joining us virtually this morning. We're having to do things a bit differently this year, as you can see. Even so, it is my hope that by sharing this ceremony online, it'll make it available to more people in our caring community. Many of us vividly recall that morning 19 years ago today when our country was forever changed. We will always remember the horror and the helplessness that we felt as we watched the devastating news reports unfold on September 11th of 2001. And also in the weeks that followed as the continued news poured in. And yet with each year that passes, these awful terrorist attacks become more distant. And for most students today, 9-11 is history. For just a moment, let us review and reflect on what happened that terrible morning in 2001 on the other side of our country <clears throat> it started with 19 Al-Qaeda terrorists who hijacked four commercial airplanes. They deliberately crashed the first two planes into the twin towers of the World Trade Center in New York. At 8.46 a.m., the first tower was hit. At 9.03 a.m., the second tower was then hit. And then at 9.37 a.m., a third plane crashed into the Pentagon building in Arlington, Virginia. At 9.59 a.m., the World Trade Center's South Tower collapsed. At 10.03 a.m., the fourth plane crashed into a field in Pennsylvania, about 20 minutes away from Washington, D.C. After learning about the other attacks, passengers on that plane fought back, saving hundreds of lives at that plane's intended target. We are forever indebted to their bravery. Finally, at 10.28 a.m., the World Trade Center's North Tower collapsed. So in less than two hours, nearly 3,000 people from 93 countries were killed. Stanley Prainmouth was working in the banking office in the World Trade Center's South Tower that morning. <clears throat> from his office on the 81st floor, he saw an airplane fly past the Statue of Liberty, and then he saw the hijacked plane bank and head back straight toward his office. Outside his office windows, he could see a red stripe on the fuselage and the letter U for United States. Stanley then dove 
under his metal desk just before the nose of the plane smashed through the tower only 130 feet away from that desk. The ceiling collapsed and everything around him burst into flames. Stanley said a prayer at that time. He wanted to see his wife and daughters again. He told God he was not ready to die and started yelling for help. Because a stranger named Brian Clark heard his cries and came to help him, Stanley was one of only four people to escape the impact zone that morning. Using his flashlight, Brian fo followed Stanley's cries through the smoke and convinced him to jump over a mangled sheetrock wall. They were both bleeding and dirty, and all survivors who were able to started walking down dozens of flights of stairs with glass everywhere and water gushing down. It took an hour to make that long walk. Stanley and Brian made the long walk down together, helping each other along the way. In the process, they, found, they each found a new best friend and their families have stayed close throughout these years. Brian says, we were both very happy to be alive, but at the same time, the main emotion we felt was the deep sadness, sadness for all those who had lost their lives. When the Twin Towers were struck, between 16,000 and 18,000 people were working in the World Trade Center complex. Most were evacuated safely thanks to the first responders and the rescue personnel on the site. Sadly, so many people did not survive that morning. Many victims of September 11th were first responders. Among those killed were 343 firefighters and 72 law enforcement officers. They were heroes, heroes who made the ultimate sacrifice in the service of others. Here in Marysville on September 11th, another very special meaning comes to mind for us. On the same day of the terrorist attacks in 2001, one of our own first responders lost his life to cancer. Lieutenant Jeff Thornton was an 18 year veteran with Marysville Fire. As the public education officer known as Fireman Jeff, he worked hard, he played hard, and he fought hard. As Jeff's obituary noted, it was both ironic and fitting that he responded to his last call on the same day as so many of his firefighter, firefighting brothers and sisters on the East Coast. <clears throat> Jeff will always be remembered as a favorite son of the Marysville family. Thank you to all who continue to honor his memory. And our thoughts and prayers go out once again this morning to his family, who hopefully is watching with us. They are usually here every year with us at this event. So today we honor first responders who gave their lives trying to save the lives of others, along with all who perished on that awful day. I wanna thank our Marysville Fire District for organizing this event again this year as they do every year. I wanna thank Chaplain Dan Hazen I want to thank our bugler, retired fire captain, Chip Cruzy, for both your meaningful contributions today as well. Thank you to Fire Chief Martin McFalls, Police Chief Jeff Goldman, and to all the men and women of Marysville Fire and Marysville Police who serve our community so bravely 24-7. Thank you to all first responders who serve and protect Marysville and communities throughout the country every single day. And finally, thank you to every one of you for joining us this morning to honor this solemn occasion and to celebrate our freedoms as Americans. We do appreciate it. Here in Marysville, we will never forget. And now please join me in a moment of silence as we include in our thoughts and in our prayers, those who are left today with only the blessed memories of their loved ones.
up on personnel. Up, Dan. Up. Yeah. 